tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Welcome, dear listener, to Fear from the Heartland. I'm your host, Paul J. McSorley. Set aside some moments now and take an adventurous ride on a journey into the psyche of some talented writers. They will dig into your being and titillate you. Oh, I love that word, titillate. While the stories may not all take place in the heartland, I am delivering them to you from the heartland. My intention is to strike fear and confusion into the mind, soul, and yes, the heart. This is Fear from the Heartland. Hello, Heartlanders, and welcome to Season 5, Episode 8 of Fear from the Heartland. I'm your host, Paul J. McSorley. Hey, Heartlanders, you guys patrons yet? Visit simplyscarypodcast.com and click Patrons in the upper menu to join the club. You'll get ad-free versions of this and all our other podcasts, including hundreds of standalone releases from our audio archives dating back to 2012. It's a great way to show your support and you get a whole lot for it. I just love to hang out with my shadow. It makes me feel grounded. I have total trust in my shadow. It follows me wherever I go. Yet, I'm always in the dark when it comes to making jokes about shadows. I do know, however, you can never be shady if you have a dark side. Tonight's author has a dark side as we will find out in a tale by Corpse Child. Let's get after it. Gon lived a violent life. His foes were vanquished with tooth and claw. And when Gon dies by tooth and claw, all his battles cease, right? Gon soon learns the afterlife is filled with much the same. That is, until he learns who the one foe he never thought of battling for peace, himself. And now, for your indulgence, The Shadows Within the Mountain by Corpse Child. Gon's muscles strain as he continues pulling himself up the ashen dark mountain. In his ears, the words of the divine Kala echo. You have much to atone for, Jackal. To the peak of the black mountain you must climb. There you will face yourself. His claws continued to dig further and further into the mountain's surface. The mountain is no ordinary one, though, made neither of stone or earth but of marble, glassy and impenetrable. His claws, which in life could have disemboweled both man and lichen alike with ease, barely make a dent for him to anchor himself with. He had climbed for nigh a millennia now, and would continue, it seems, for a millennia more. His body aches and his heart begs for mercy. His mind, however, assures him he deserves none. If he falters, his soul is lost to the void below him, to the boundless underdark where not even Kala could save him. He looks briefly down and the abyss returns his gaze, grinning with gluttonous desire for his soul. The thought crosses his mind if it weren't perhaps better that he would fall to the underdark, that he would cease to exist. His soul was a tainted one. In life and in death, his soul was dredged in innocent blood. Under even the divine voice of Kala, he could hear their pleas for mercy their cries for justice that, despite his death in the physical world, go unsatisfied. Why Kala decided to preserve his soul at all is something still uncertain to him. He reaches a crest of the mountain and decides to rest for a while. 
His body needed a period of rest, lest it fail him. He has just enough strength to lift himself onto the ledge, where he lays flat on his back and stares at the golden sky above. Above the gold overcast, Gan Nu was the domain of Kala, the city of the Lycans. There rests the domain Kala herself forged in the days long past, the Elysium. The domain reserved only for those of Lycandom, where mortal men could not tread or taint. The clouds above, the wispy strands of ethereal light shimmering across the golden sky, passed him by, each bearing expressions of shame and disapproval upon him. Gon thinks to close his eyes, but sheer determination will not allow him to do so. He must face his sins here, on this mountain. The sky grows dark, a new crimson wash spreading over the golden sky. The faces borne upon the wispy clouds start twisting from mere disapproval to those of ones of abject agony and sorrow. Though not outwardly, so inwardly, he can hear their cries. Why? What have we done against you? What made us so abhorrent to you? Why do you not love? This stings Gon's heart. Like a branding iron is being placed straight onto his heart, he thinks to himself, I do love. He thinks again of his dearest Rhea. He thinks also of his proud child. The things that gave his life its utmost value. He thinks of them and of how they were stripped from him. He then thinks of the fiend responsible for this, but his mind draws a blank. He sees the villain's face but remembers nothing of it. Perhaps his memory had begun to ebb away, he thinks to himself. A product of transcendence, perhaps? The image of the pit comes to him. The blood-stained pit atop the mountain overlooking the land of Terrace, whose very stone has been imbued with the suffering of thousands, tens of thousands, both of innocence and the guilty alike, of men and lichens alike. His greatest victory his last hour of life. He shakes his head. The frustration is too much for him, his lapse in memory. How could he forget something so monumental? Does he want to remember? He turns his head, but the cries do not dissipate. They only grow in his ears. Then, from the opening of a cavern, a voice calls to him. You think you're the victim, Jackal? He picks up his head and turns. There's no one standing there, yet the voice comes again. I was right about you. Nothing except a lowly jackal. Gon pulls himself to his feet. Walking over to the entrance, he peers in. Who's there? He demands. Where are you? Show yourself. You've forgotten already? This time the voice comes from a softer throat one that's soothing and sultry. Have you no shame? Gon snaps his head to look. Where are you? Gon feels a presence approach. There's no form to be seen. He turns his head in both directions, yet in neither can he see his audience. We will always be with you here, Gon, answers the deeper voice. Scars never heal. Another voice calls from the darkness, lashing at him, saying, You will always see us. Deep down, you shall feel us as well. Gon flinches, another chilling touch passing over his shoulder. Show yourselves! He screams. The chilling touch passes once more over his shoulders, starting to close in around him. The bite comes to him as a sting, not like that of a bitter wind, but rather the pain of a branding iron across his flesh. You know us, says the first voice. You see us deep within, adds the soft voice. Behind him, Gon turns to see that the exit from the cave has been sealed, despite there being no stone or boulder with which to do so. You've entered, and now you'll never leave, Jackal. Gon turns to see standing in front of him a fellow lichen, scarred and badly beaten. He appears younger than Gon, a pup, yet bearing a ferocity in his eye all too familiar to Gon. This was a jackal born and bred. Not just this, though. No, 
this one gone knew. It was we who you oppressed with your actions gone, he spits, bolstering the tyranny of men against the Lycans. I fought against them, brother, Gon retorts. Oh yes, the pit. At the mere mention, Gon grimaces. The memory of carnage returns. He sees once more the body of a murdered jackal torn apart by feral jaws. Then it hits him. You. I remember you. And I you. I was murdered by you at Lord Greyhame's command. You would have done the same to me, exclaims Gon. Yes, but unlike you, he didn't deceive anyone into believing in his redemption. This voice was a new one, yet one that was far more familiar to him, damning to him. Like me, however, he paid the price for your sins, dearest Gon. Rhea. He turns and to his boundless terror is met with the sight of his departed love. She stands a foot away from him at the cub's side, boring into him with condescending eyes. Yes, love, I am here. Here where all the anguished lie, and all because of you. But, but I... He stops. His tongue runs dry. He has no words. You what, dear? You don't understand? She steps closer to him. You thought you had been forgiven for your deeds? Blood only buys more blood, calls another all-too-familiar voice from the darkness ahead. Another chilling wind bites gone, and from the darkness steps none other than the fallen lord of men himself, Daruka Graham. Gon's eyes grow as the realization strikes him again. No, no, I, I saw you. You were felled in the pit. You can't be alive. The man stepped forward. You're dead. Daruka laughs and replies, No, jackal, you see, I live because of you. We all live through you exclaims the jackal cub and Rhea in perfect unison. They advance upon Gon. Gon steps back, his heart pounding and legs shaking. We live, cries the trio in uniform discord, their voices distorting into an ethereal howling. And we suffer because of you, Gon. No, 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 he screams in both defiance and terror. The trio howl before bounding for him, all with arms outstretched to take hold of and strangle the life from him. With less than a second's reaction, Gon leaps out of the way, successfully dodging the lichen cub and Daruka. Rhea, however, catches him and pins him to the floor. The two struggle on the floor, but Gon is seemingly powerless against his love's might. Now you burn! She crawls before unhinging her jaws. She rears back and attempts to clamp down around his throat, but is halted by Gon pushing back against her jaws. Gon's arms shake, having only barely the strength sufficient enough to hold her back. From the corners of his eyes, Gon sees the two others approach. Just before they can reach him, Gon uses a burst of adrenaline to throw Rhea off of him and scramble back to his feet. He bounds away from them, allowing at least a foot's distance between them and himself while Rhea recovers her own feet. Standing before them again, Gon takes his battle stance. This time, he would go on the offensive. Seeing him as the one least likely to defend himself so quickly, Gon charges the Lycan cub first. His assumption betrays him, however, as, with speed, the cub throws a clawed swipe at Gon's face, knocking him to the ground. Gon quickly rolls back onto his feet, but not in time to keep himself from being bludgeoned over the head from behind by Daruka's fists. Gon stumbles, but his balance remains. He sees the lichen charge at him and dives out of the way, allowing him to spearhead Daruka square in his midsection. The two collapse onto the ground while Rhea charges him from behind. Gon turns around just in time to catch and hurl her away with the other two adversaries. She too crashes to the ground, where then the trio as a whole disappear into puffs of silky white vapor. Gon remains prone for five seconds longer before allowing himself to relax. His enemies were defeated. The trial was over. The trial was over. He turns about again. Still, there appears to be no exit in sight. Gon's head remains on a swivel until he stops, 
hearing another set of groans echoing down the cavern. Blood only buys more blood, they cry. Khan looks ahead, knowing now that there's only one way he can go, whether he wants to or not. Forward, into the darkness. He inhales and takes a measured step forward, then another and another. Gan's ears perked up, listening specifically for any footsteps in the dark not his own. Another chilling breeze met him head on. From his left and right, figures began appearing in the corners of his eyes. They each gather together, glaring at Gan. Gan pays them no mind and continues forward. They open their mouths, stretching them to unnatural lengths and howl at him in rage and grief. Gan pays no heed to this either keeping both his eyes and ears on the path ahead. He couldn't let these wraiths distract him or avert his guard, lest he invite another ambush. In their ethereal howls, Gan hears them cry. You've done this to us. Set us free. You are a fiend. A monster. Only a lowly jackal. Why do you hate us? Have you no heart? At least he wasn't deceived into believing in your redemption. He stops for a moment, looks at the ground, shakes his head, and continues forward with his heart weighing heavier and heavier in his chest. How, he wondered, is any of this possible? Of course, he knew the all-powerful might of Kala was responsible for his restoration, but how then is he finding those he knew to be dead most of whom were murdered by his hand. What was their purpose for engaging him now? Just what was his destiny that Kala spoke so highly of? And what did this mountain have to do with it? Gon's pace appears to continue for an eternity until he stops again, this time to the sound he had been waiting for, the sound of something or someone approaching him in the dark. His ears twitch with each second passing, the oncomer's movements are soft, light, quick, and stealthy. This wasn't merely the lichen cub or any of their sort. They'd have given themselves away in a direct charge at his position. No, this was the work of a skilled assassin. Light as they were, Gon swears who or whatever it is must be a small woodland critter, such as a bunny or perhaps even the paws of a lynx scampering across the stone. Listening closer, though, he realized that this beast was too big to be such a creature. But who or what then could it be? Gon closes his eyes and tries to think of all those he knew he had wronged in life, only to draw a blank, not out of apathy or dispassion, but rather out of the sheer number and guilt he felt for it. The chilling breeze roused him back to his senses again to find a horde of wraiths, including the trio of Rhea, Daruka, and the Lycan Club all surrounding him. Gon bends his knees in preparation once more for a fight. The Horde each take a few steps forward. Some appear to stumble, as though their legs barely bore any strength in them. Gon moves his left leg behind him, allowing himself a more solid stance. They take another step where Gon then notices something. The wraiths do not seem to be closing in on him, but rather upon themselves. It starts with two of them, a lichen and a man, neither of whom stand out as familiar to Gon, but strike him as familiar nonetheless. The lichen falls forward, while the man follows and the pair then appear to fuse together, conjoining to one embodiment, one ethereal soul. Others then follow suit, one after another, the souls of lichens and men falling together into one. The numbers dwindle until finally there stands only one being in front of Gon. It stands, tall and dominant, wreathed entirely in shadow. Its only defining features are its outline, which, Gon notes, bear a haunting similarity to his own and its molten infernal eyes glaring into him, past his own eyes and into his heart. A deep bellowing laughter rumbles throughout the cave, one that's as evil as it is primal. Gon braces himself upright once more, prepared to engage his new enemy. Before any blows would be made, however, the malign shadow blasted forth an enraged howl before turning and bolting further into the darkness ahead. Gon stands for a second, anticipating his opponent's return. The cave remains silent and still, 
Gon allows himself to relax while his mind explores endless possibilities regarding his next move and how he might get out of this cave. He throws his head in every direction, yet in none do his eyes find an exit. He slowly turns forward again. Come, jackal, bellows the voice of a demon, unnaturally baritone and distorted. Come on, I thought you were fierce. You were a warrior, were you not? Who are you? cries Gon. Even when he asks this though, deep down he knows his answer. It's one that's far too horrific to acknowledge though. You must face yourself to free your soul and be absolved. Gon steps forward, keeping his claws bared, ready for any and all things that might lurk in the boundless dark ahead. Come, Jackal, come. His pace quickens. His head is swiveling all about. He sees nothing, no source for which the voice is emanating from, yet it booms from all around him. You fear me, don't you? Gon begins to run. His eyes remain forward, focused. Yes, come behind me. Face me. His weight shifts forward, lowering himself to the ground to continue forward on all fours. His heart thumps so loud that it echoes off the walls of the cave. Gon is set to continue running for eternity until he comes across a steep incline. He stops and looks up. Looking down upon him are the eyes of his shadowed menacer. You are a coward, Jackal. You aren't fit to be absolved of a damn thing. You'll rot here along with all the rest. The shadow appears to kick something down the slope. When it reaches the ground, Gon examines it closer to find that it is a skull, a femur, and a forearm bone. Confused, perhaps a bit intrigued, Gon touches the skull, only to immediately retract in horror when an earth-splitting howl of agony rings in his ears. The shock alone makes his heart abruptly stop. The shrieks continue echoing in his mind, only slowly dying down over time. Hear them and quiver, lashes the shadow, for they are your legacy. Gon exchanges a glance at the shadow at the top of the slope, then at the discarded bones. My legacy, he wonders to himself, shaking. If you have any pride... I will see you at the peak, Jackal. With this, Gon looks up again in time to see the shadow turn again and disappear once more. Gon steps forward, then stops, his eyes falling once more on the bones. My legacy. He approaches a second time and kneels down. His right arm outstretches to touch the skull once more. Like before, his talon touched the skull, immediately resulting in another scream of abject agony. This time, though, Gon is conditioned to it. Its startling factor has worn off. Now Gon notices something strange about the screaming. It doesn't appear to be from one throat, but instead from many at once. Man, woman, wolf, she-wolf. Then it hits him. These cries are the same he had heard only moments ago from the Wraith Horde. The wraiths, those whom had fallen, all by... You must face yourself to atone, God. By... You must face yourself to atone, God. By his hand. He touches the femur, and it too produces hellish screams and pleas for mercy. Gon stands again, his eyes remaining with the bones. The bones... His legacy, his testament for his life as a fiend, as a murderer, a defiler, his life as a lowly jackal. He closes his eyes. The cries have not yet died away completely, forcing him to drink them in all the longer. Briefly, he remembers the days when cries such as these would fill him with ecstasy unmeasurable, when the sight and sound of another's suffering would instill in him a sense of power when bloodshed and brutality were his only morals and purpose. He shivers, as a fellow dog might feel returning to his vomit. Gon feels the chilling temptation to give himself to bloodlust again, 
to savor the cacophony here creep down his spine. It's exciting, alluring even. He could be strong again, could he not? Why could he not? Kala herself may have restored him here for a noble purpose, but what concern of that is his? What was atonement to him anyway? Could he really ascend to the Elysium? Another image then intrudes, countering thoughts of carnage. The grin of his beautiful she-wolf, Rhea. She who had loved him, not merely as a lichen, but even as a jackal. She who had believed when none else would that he was capable of quelling his own lust for blood. But she's gone. Her blood stains my hands. Even she believes my redemption is a lie. Briefly, he hears a voice even softer, even more soothing than that of Rhea, a divine voice, the voice of Kala herself. Atonement is one's own battle god, not to others. If you are ever to truly heal, then it will be through the exorcism of your own demons. You can only win this through your own strength, not through your beloved's your brethren's, or even mine. You are all you have, and you are all you truly need. With this, the voice and presence of Kala leaves him alone once more. He stares back at the top of the ledge. His breathing slows again. One's own battle, he thinks to himself. She said it was one's own battle. At the top of the mountain, he swears he can see the shadow's red glare beating down upon him as though it were the sun glaring upon a dying man in the middle of the desert. His ears stand tall as, distantly, he thinks too that he can hear its menacing laughter hurling from the peak as well. If you have any pride, jackal. Gon closes his eyes and inhales. He must remain focused. His mind must be put at ease if he was to face his enemy. His mind would have to be without doubt, without regret, and without fear. These he knew would be the deadliest weapons his enemy would use against him. It was true during his life, and so how could his death be any different? Stealing himself, he throws up his arms and latches on to the side of the mountain once more. His claws anchor themselves deep into the darkened rock and he heaves himself upward. He uses both arms to launch himself upward, allowing himself to clear much more distance in much less time. With each upheaval, he imagines that his outstretched claws are seizing at his enemy. As he goes along, his eyes remain focused solely on the peak of the mountain. The shadow glares back at him. In his mind, Gon can hear the deep voice bellow to him. Your struggle is moot. Cease this, for there is neither peace nor salvation to await you, jackal. Gon ignores this. The enemy will say anything to disparage him, to defeat him without a struggle. He won't allow this, however. He never allowed himself defeat in life, only death. His aching muscles once more squeal for mercy. This he shrugs away with the rest of the shadow's heretic speech. His chest feels heavier and heavier with each time he heaves himself closer and closer to the peak of the mountain, his breath straining more and more. His vision soon starts failing him, reducing the sight of the mountaintop to little more than a golden cloud with the shadows standing as the only offset, a speck of dirt against a radiant canvas. Still, he pushes on, higher and higher going until at one point along the mountainside, only one of his claws manages to catch causing him to very nearly plummet from the mountain into the blackened depths below. From the single claw, only about three of Gon's digits find their hold in the mountainside. He makes another attempt at anchoring the other claw into the mountain, only to find that his arm was too weak to plunge it through the rock. The arm clinging to the mountainside is straining, being forced to bear his complete body weight. I knew you had no pride, Jackal. <laughs> Lashes the shadow from above with a gleefully menacing laugh that echoed down the mountain, making even its foundation tremble with fear. Gon once more meets gaze with the shadow. He can no longer distinguish the shadow's features, but he can't imagine the sickly grin it must be wearing, watching him break himself venturing up the mountain. One of his claws starts slipping from its divot in the mountain. 
His body is a little more than dead weight, utterly useless and hindering to him. Then another, and another, until two of them slipped free entirely. Anchored only now by two claws, both of which were slipping more and more with each passing second, Gon looks down to the abyss below. I failed. I cannot do this. I cannot face my one true enemy. Atonement is one's own battle, Gon. One more claw slips out, leaving the last as his sole anchor now. His body leans closer and closer downward, foreshadowing its own imminent plunge. They're still good in you, Gon. In the cavernous maw of darkness below, Gon pictures the face of Rhea. He can see her, face twisting in grief, crying and moaning in agony. Her words from the cave stab his mind once more. His heart drops as a millstone into his stomach. Around her, he pictures the darkness below as the walls of the dungeon, her crucible, where she paid for his sins with both her body and life, all because of him. And he was about to fail her again. No! He roars. His voice carries all the way up the mountain, to and beyond the peak and shaking even the golden overcast. His eyes find the peak once more and his arms likewise find strength. He plunges the other claw into the mountain, preparing for another upheaval. At the peak, Gon sees the shadow step backward. His eyes no longer glare at him in disgust, but are now wide with what Gon recognizes all too well as fear. With even more vigor than before, Gon hurls himself skyward, clearing more and more distance with each heave. The shadow backs away from his ledge where he was watching Gon struggle until disappearing from sight entirely. Gon saw nothing but meat. Fresh, unspoiled, raw meat. A coward a desperate enemy. Yes, he would continue this climb, breaking his body to rubble if necessary. When he reaches the crest of the peak, Gon stops one last time, allowing himself a brief moment's respite before planting himself firm in the mountainside, rearing back and launching himself up with a mighty leap for the very peak itself. With the force of his upheaval, Gon clears the ledge entirely and narrows himself for a sharp and concise descent aiming himself as a spear for the waiting shadow standing in the center of the peak. Gon misses his mark with the shadow skirting out of the way. Recovering his feet quickly, Gon turns to once more face his opponent. The shadow stands tall, just as he had in the cave earlier. He bears no smile, no malicious grin or hateful expression as Gon assumed earlier. No, instead, the shadow merely regards him with a cold, burning stare. No pride, you said? spits Gon. You say I have no pride? You didn't, nor do I believe that you do now, Jackal. Gon takes a rock-solid stance against his enemy. Then allow me to demonstrate the true meaning of prideless. Gon lunges at his opponent. The shadow, expecting this, dives out of the way. Gon catches himself on the ground before charging at the shadow again on all fours. The second attempt proves just as unsuccessful as the first. Seething with rage and aggression, Gon moves with all quickness, clawing and slashing at the shadow only for none of his attacks to strike true. Each unsuccessful strike only serves to further infuriate him. His attacks, which started as at least somewhat calculated and precise, become more and more frantic and random. The shadow laughs at this seeing the pitiful jackal flail around as though he were an out-of-control child, as though he were a sniveling wolf cub again, merely howling over a piece of meat. Come now, you're the fearsome jackal who strikes fear in the hearts of man and lichen? Pathetic! <laughs> Gon roars and hurls himself through the air with enough force to break through barriers of either rock or granite. Yet still, he cannot so much as lay the tip of his claw upon the shadow. This makes the shadow's laughter grow louder, which causes the mountain to quake beneath them. Yes, I see now why she believes you cannot be redeemed. I see now that Rhea deserved far better than you, Jackal. Gon howls and roars at the shadow. His eyes bulge from their sockets. Veins spider web across the whites of his eyes. The crimson overcast to him begins to bleed a deep scarlet. This fiend, the
this bottom-dwelling, faceless, nameless bitch heel dares to use the name of his beloved Rhea against him? She suffered you in so many ways, Jackal. She loved you, believed in you, and you couldn't even be a decent lichen for her. You couldn't protect her. Silence! Screams Gon. Silence? Like how you remained silent while she was brutalized? Or perhaps like how your own people were hunted all because of you? <laughs> the shadow cackles. Yes, I should be silent. Plus, I can take after a worm ridden scum dog like you. Gon blasts forth a rage-filled howl to the golden sky before charging with all speed at the shadow, ready to tackle him and tear him apart. Just as he would have the shadow, however, it once more moves far too quickly out of Gon's range, causing him to slam into the side of the mountain behind where he once stood. The impact dazes Gon, resulting in his vision exploding into a cloud of stars and blurred color once more. Once more, the shadow stands as not more than a speck against the brown rocky terrain. The strength in Gon's legs wane, leaving him struggling to advance upon his enemy. The shadow laughs again. This is pathetic, it scoffs. When you told me you would demonstrate the meaning of prideless, I did not realize that you meant yourself, and especially not in such an embarrassing manner, jackal. Gon stumbles forward drunkenly. His arms, like his legs, hold very little strength, not enough to be valuable in combat. Nausea starts crawling up from his spine. His head is swimming, swinging back and forth between blinding rage and confusion. This is beginning to bore me, Jackal. Come, take your best crack at me. I won't move from this spot, I promise. Distorted as the shadow's face is, Gon can still picture in his mind the vulpine grin engraven upon his foe's face. The shadow stood just at the edge of the peak. Adrenaline starts coursing through Gon's veins once more. Once more, Gon experiences a surge of rejuvenated strength in his arms and legs. So that's how this is, I see, scoffs the shadow. I give you one final opportunity to strike me down, and you do nothing? You think merely growling at me there is going to defeat me? Ha 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 ha! Laughter rumbles throughout the mountain once more. Gon stumbles forth again. This time, his stride starting to pick up again in speed. In his mind, he can only imagine one thing, the utter mutilation and aggression he intends to exact upon the shadow. It can see this too, and it smiles at him. Gon's pace quickens. The adrenaline propels him further and further, faster and faster. The world once more washes with a deep scarlet filter, Gon's heart races, punching away at his ribcage. He would do it. He would tear this fiend apart with his own bare claws. Briefly, he sees the grin on the face of the shadow widen, stretching across its face. Gon licks his gleaming, ravenous fangs, imagining he was already licking the blood of the shadow from them. The shadow outstretched its arms, ready to catch him, embracing him, and with him, their oblivion as they would plummet off the mountain together into the abyss below. He stops. His heart and head pound furiously. His arms and legs both twitch, yet he will not move an inch further. The shadow tilts his head to the side, its grin still wide and toothy. That's it, isn't it? He wants me to attack, doesn't he? We'll both die if I do, and then... His breathing is slow to recompose. As it does, Gon's eyes narrow. The shadow's grin falters a bit with his eyes cocked in confusion. Yes, it was true, thinks Gon. He's playing the shadow's game here, giving in to the mental assault from his enemy, trying simply to slaughter his enemy instead of outsmarting him first, using brutality alone to obtain a victory just like... like... just like a jackal. Gon closes his eyes. His breath comes slower and slower finally feeling soothing again rather than simply sustaining. So you're not going to attack me? Calls the shadow. Gon pays him no heed. If he were to defeat this enemy, 
he would have to do so completely detached from his conscience or his emotions. One's own battle, just as Kala told him. Now he understands. I see a jackal and a coward. Gon hears the foot of the shadow start to move across the rocky surface of the ground. Then I'll finish you myself. Gon stands perfectly still. His eyes remain closed, his mind and soul detached completely from his body. His ears detect the approaching footfalls of the shadow scampering hastily across the rock. The mind of Gon is calm. His body is calm. The shadow's footfalls pound ever closer and closer to him. Gon doesn't move. He hears the shadow's paw lift from the ground one last time. He can hear the air chopping with its paw coming toward him, primed to deal a finishing blow. The air passes over him, yet Gon remains unfazed. The second paw is heard swinging through the air at him. This too passes through him, leaving Gon unscathed. Gon doesn't move. Thrice more, the shadow's claws can be heard chopping through the air, furiously swiping at Gon, yet none can seem to harm him. What is this? asks the flustered shadow. Why do you not fight? Still, Gon does not move, nor do his ears hear the shadow's words. The shadow flails at him two more times, both of which prove unsuccessful. Damn you! screams the shadow in a tone so deep and fearsome the mountain quakes to the point of crumbling. Fight me, Jackal! Fight me! I will not, replies Gon in an equally deep and fearsome yet cold and quieter voice at the shadow. You will not? You refuse to fight? Are you really such a coward, Jackal? Gon does not reply. You think yourself higher than me? You and I are the same, both of us Jackals. Gon hears the shadow's claw whistle through the air once more. This time, instead of letting it pass over him, he shoots out his arm and catches the blow. In the same cold, inhuman tone, he declares, No. The shadow stands abashed. How could he be caught? How could this foe, this jackal, touch him? Gon's eyes open. They look at the shadow. Not in anger, not in rage, and certainly not in awe or fear, but in victory. You are a jackal. You who seeks only to kill, to sabotage and break. You whose words are nothing but impotent venom to me. You who embodies nothing but hatred for others. You are the jackal. I am no longer. Gon's grip tightens around the wrist of the shadow. The shadow jerks back but is unable to wrestle himself from the lichen. Release me! The shadow bellows. Very well then. He then hurls the shadow away from him back towards the edge of the mountain. The shadow just barely keeps from diving over the side. He stands hunched over, ready to attack again. Gon stands solid. His glare pierces through the shadow's flabbergasted eyes. The two stare for a further ten seconds before Gon breaks away, turning around and stepping toward the mouth of the cave. His back turned to the shadow, Gon declares, This battle is ended. I will fight you no longer, for I will no longer allow rage to consume my heart as it had in life. Coward! screams the shadow. You will not fight me because you know you cannot win! That is all, mere bluster of your own defeat. Gon does not acknowledge the shadow and continues walking forward. You are prideless, admit it, Jackal. Gon disappears into the darkness. Fight me, Jackal! Fight me! Kill me! Strike me! No answer comes from the cave. Have you lost hearing? Come back and kill me, Jackal! Nothing. The shadow stomps his foot, causing the mountain to shake. He howls to the golden sky, causing the foundation to crumble apart beneath him. You will face me, Jackal! Hear me! You will fight and you will die! We are Jackals, you and I! We do not change! We are monsters and nothing more! The shadow continues stomping harder and harder, and more and more does the ground split apart. Return and fight! Return and fight! Return and fight! 
The shadow's enraged demands are silenced by a single stomp that shatters the ground beneath him. The words then devolve into fading screams as he plummets to his fate in the cavernous abyss below. Gon's ear twitches. A single falling pebble brushes his left ear and far in the distance behind him, Gon hears the sound of distant rumbling. More than this, he can feel it through the ground beneath him. When he turns around, his eyes grow at the sight of the ground beneath him crumbling away, coming closer and closer to where he stands. Immediately, Gon turns and bolts for the other end of the cave. His arms and legs bear very little strength, yet he still lowers himself and sprints on all fours where he may clear much more distance at a much quicker pace. The mountain crumbles now from both above and below. He just barely manages to keep himself ahead of the devastation behind him. On and on he goes, and yet not even a speck of golden light from the outside sky shows through the palpable suffocating abyss around him, indicating at least the illusion of an exit. Gon's heart races once more, his eyes bulge, pulsing and quaking almost in congruence with that of his heart. He knows he won't make it. There's no way out. He would plunge into the abyss after all. Whether by hand of the shadow or by the devastation of the mountain itself, Gon would plunge into the abyss and cease to exist, for not even the almighty Kala would retrieve his soul from such a place. He closes his eyes. Please, Kala, if damnation truly be my fate, then may it be and may it pass. But if thou hast a purpose for me, then may thy hand deliver me. As if heeding his prayer, Gon hears the smooth motherly voice of his goddess. Run no more, my child, for damnation is a fate befitting only for jackals. Stand your ground, Gon, and have no fear, for when you do, you shall awaken in safety. Gon's head pounds. How could he stop now? How would he awaken in safety? Nevertheless, he obeys his goddess's commands to halt. He puts just a little ways distance between himself and the crumbling ground before stopping in his tracks. Seeing the approaching devastation, Gon closes his eyes once more and sighs. This is it. His ordeal was finished. Whether salvation or damnation awaited him, Gon's atonement was completed. The ground beneath his feet gave way. Soon, Gon feels only air beneath his paws. The cave crumbles around him. He can hear, but strangely, Gon notices he is not falling as he was expecting to. The cave continues to crumble until, eventually, he cannot hear anything anymore. The area around him is silent. Slowly, Gon's eyes open, only to close again from sheer blindness that meets him. Welcome back, Gon, speaks a smooth voice. Kala? asks Gon, straining to attempt opening his eyes again. I am, she replies. Gon's eyes slowly adjust once more to the light, as it does the heavenly figure of the golden-haired angelic lichen makes itself known to Gon. She is smiling warmly at him. You've saved me, says Gon, breathless. Nay, replies Kala. I have merely given you what had been promised. Atonement for amnesty, repentance for absolution. She reaches out and places a single paw against his chest. The cleansing of your heart and soul, child, that is all that had been required of you. For you acted even under duress with reason and sympathy. You chose to turn away and depart, rather than simply destroying your enemies. Gon looks down at the nothingness he held himself above. You fought your greatest enemy and won. You have won the battle of atonement. Gon looks back up at Kala seeing now how all of the pieces, all of the connections in the events that transpired on that accursed mountain. Gon has only one question for his goddess. Where will you take me now, Divine Mother? Kala does not answer except with a sultry and smooth grin parting the corner of her mouth. You have atoned and your soul is clean. From here, I shall appoint you to sit in my court in the Elysium. Come, Gon. Come join me. A 
I hope you enjoyed tonight's tale, The Shadows Within the Mountain, by Corpse Child. Corpse Child is a young person with a fascination with the art of terror and the macabre. When he's not watching horror movies or reading horror novels or stories, he's always crafting his own chilling gospels of horror to terrify and eternally rob you of a peaceful slumber. Currently, he publishes most of his work to Reddit under his pen name Corpse Child. Many of his horror stories have been featured and adapted to audio narrations by a wide variety of YouTube narrators, including some of the bigger names in the field, as well as the ones commissioned on the Chilling app and was featured in the debut issue of Ill-Advised Records, The Dark Door e and now is the in-house author, artist, and founding member for Psychotoxin Press and its ongoing horror magazine, Eidetic Quarterly. Check out Corpse Child's offerings at reddit.com backslash r backslash Corpse Child Gospels. That's C-O-R-P-S-E-C-H-I-L-D-G-O-S-P-E-L-S. Or his website, psychotoxin.com. That's P-S-Y-C-H-O-T-O-X-I-N.com. If you enjoyed tonight's story, hosted by yours truly, Paul J. McSorley, you can search my name on Chilling Tales for Dark Nights on YouTube for additional previous stories. If you'd like to hear more lengthy tales, be sure to take a look at my audiobooks. Available now on audible.com or just visit paulsbooks.net. That's P A U L S B O O K S.net. You can also find me personally on Facebook and Twitter. And with that, listeners, our weekly journey into the psyche has just about come to a close. But before we go, I'd like to take a moment to thank you for joining us for tonight's episode and remind you to take a moment to stop by our iTunes page and leave Chilling Tales for Dark Nights a five-star review and a kind word. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you haven't already. And while you're at it, please remember to stop by our Apple Podcast page or wherever else you listen to your favorite podcasts and subscribe. The charts are based on subscriptions, not listens. So if you haven't subscribed, Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.